Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, we're glad you're here. I know we got a lot of folks with weather and, and uh, lot, still got a ton of people vacationing this morning. Hey, we're going to do things just a little bit different today. Uh, about a week and a half ago, I got to meet some dear, dear people named Greg and Mary Duncan. Hey, can we turn the house lights up a little bit, Brother Dave, if you don't mind? And uh, got to share with them, and they wanted to join the church. And so we were able to go through their spiritual journey where they are and their husband and wife. Hey, would you guys stand up for just a moment? And uh, they're right over there. And so they're joining our church this morning. So Greg and Mary, we welcome your first Baptist Center Star. I wish we could do all the hugging and loving and stuff that we normally would do. But we welcome you. They are great believers, great testimony. Uh, it, it just I hope you'll get to meet them and know them, who they are in the Lord. So one more time, would you welcome Greg and Mary to First Baptist Church Center Star. Glad to have you guys. All right, Pastor. Morning. Let's uh, let's let's go into the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know. Y'all are looking like you're a little afraid this morning. You're like, whoa, wait a minute. So come on, let's stand together and let's sing.
Thank you, Lord. Well, and all the church said, amen. You guys be seated. Hey, let, let me do remind you this, even though right now we have a no contact thing going on, we still have guests. We got a dear family from Tennessee. Did I get that right? They've been here for two weeks, and so we're glad to have them. Please at least smile at people and let them know we are friendly. Amen. <laughs> I got to thinking, I hope people know we do love them, amen, so it's good to have you guys, and again, welcome, uh, Duncan family. Hey, this morning, just real quick, like some things going on, hey, please pray for Rihanna and Chrissy, uh, there are our children and preschool directors, and they're trying to keep our kids engaged, uh, right now they're doing a thing, I think, called Rising, and so they're, they're just doing some things on uh, computers, virtual, media, all that stuff, try, trying to keep our boys and girls engaged in some scriptural, spiritual stuff during this summertime, so uh, please pray for them. If there's something you want to know or need to know, uh, you can call the office. We'll be happy to get you in contact with them, so please pray for all of our activities with our children and our preschool. We want to see them engaged as best we can. Remind you that Tuesday, they'll be voting on church campus. While the campus will be, uh, we'll be here, but we won't be open. It's just too hard with everything going on, people all over the place, so typically uh, we just kind of lock the door and hide, and, and there's reasons, so We'll be here if you need us. Call our cell phones. Call the church office. We'll answer. Uh, we'll be here. Just, uh, just, just need to do that for safety and things like that. Hey, pray for Brother Eric and them. They'll get ready to leave on uh, September the 10th for Guatemala. Pray for them and their departure date. Hey, you can still give to uh, Hands of Hope International. If you want to give through the church, just make it out to them. We want to make sure that any way we can possibly financially, prayerfully help them, uh, that we want to do that. So if you want to be involved in that ministry, let us know, make your checks out, give them, and we'll make sure that they're given where they need to be. So please pray for them as they get ready to do that and ask God to bless them if you would. Hey, as you came in the, the uh, foyer this morning, I hope you noticed the beautiful flower arrangements. Normally we don't do that. We're not, not big into flowers right now, whatever reason. But uh, Miss Sue Martin went to be with the Lord this week, and those are flower arrangements left over from her funeral service. And so we thought they would be beautiful to decorate the facility this morning. And so uh, we're on Facebook, I believe, right now. And I want their family to know that if they hear this, that we love Sue, we miss her. But all the flowers this morning were donated in memory and in honor of Miss Sue. So please continue to pray for that family and ask God to bless them. Hey, before we go any further this morning, uh, some prayer requests that we have. Let's remember Steve Oliver is recovering from hip surgery. Jenny Nichols, a lot of tests. Finally, she's going to be having surgery. Brad Brooks will be having gallbladder surgery. Glenda James Fell, she's in rehab. And, of course, the Sue Martin family. So be, be in prayer for all of these and ask God to certainly heal, mend, and minister to them. And by the book of James says we're to pray for the afflicted. And so we're going to do that in just a moment. But before we do that, if you're here this morning, you have a special prayer need. Would you just raise your hand? Wow. In recognition to all that God just need to know that he's here and he wants to bless Hey, today and the next few weeks, I want you to pray for me, maybe a month or two, uh, we're going to reopen this thing of prophecy. Where we are today uh, seems to be such a good to topic to talk about is prophecy. Where, where are we in the prophetic, prophetic process of prophecy? Well, there's some answers we know, some we don't. So we'll start that this morning, entitled The Blessed Hope. You know, with everything going on around us, we still have the blessed hope. And all the church said, we do. You say, Pastor, it's bad, yes, but Jesus is still coming. The imminent soon return of the Lord. So we need to prepare for that. And the Bible even gives us instructions on how to get ready for that. And I'll be giving those and then some truths and statements about prophecy. And Wendell Hutchinson is here. I think he can check me out and make sure I'm online. All right. That's the, we call him Abraham over there. He knows everything past, present, and future. Amen. So Brother Wendell will keep me straight. But, hey, we're going to start that study today, I hope. And, and I'm telling you that because uh, in a few weeks I'll be using some of David Jeremiah stuff. If you heard that, Adrian Rogers, Johnny Hunt. But the next two or three weeks, just some personal stuff. God's shown me in my study time that I hope and pray that will help you as a church and as a Christian individual to grab hold of these difficult moments that he is in control and Jesus is coming back. And that is our blessed hope. So let's live in such a way, all right? Hey, let's pray, then we're going to worship. Father, we bless you, praise you. We give you honor and glory for all that you have done. I do pray for Chrissy and Rihanna as they engage our our preschoolers and our children. I pray for Pastor Eric and the, as they keep our, ch our youth engaged. They did some activities this week, even yesterday on campus. I appreciate him and what they are doing. And God, I just ask you to, to watch over them, let them know we love them. Father, it's so good to have guests on our campus today. We pray for these who are here 
first, second, third time was just such a joy. We certainly welcome new members. But, Father, today we just want to say we love you. And God, help me to live in such a way that if you were to come today, I would be ready. But there's some things we need to know. There's some things we need to do in preparation for that. So, Father, hear our hearts, lead and guide and direct us, and we give you all the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. amen. Let's sing. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures. my soul now your freedom is all that I know oh, the old made you the old made you Jesus when I met you oh you called my name you called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen of heaven. Oh, when I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open, when you call my name. Yourself, Brother Keith, that was that was great. Um, but I was singing so fast I didn't hear what I was singing. So, sometimes that happens, right? I mean, the words are there, and you get to singing so fast, it's like you can't really concentrate on what was going on. So we're gonna slow it down, and you sing with us. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy. But chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now you're My eyes are open, 
roadmap turned over there in the eye of the storm you remain in control in the middle of the war you guard my soul you alone are the anchor when my sails are torn your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm When the solid ground has fallen out from underneath my feet, between the black skies and the red eyes, I can barely see. When I realize I've been sold out by my friends and family, I can feel the rain reminding oh, me. Oh, come on, sing. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. When my hopes and dreams are far from me and I'm running out of faith, I see the future I pictured slowly fade away and when the tears of pain and heartache are pouring down my face I find my peace in Jesus name in the eye of the storm you remain in control in the middle of the war you guard my soul you alone are the anchor when my sails are torn your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. When everything is dark around us in this world today, it is so awesome to know we've got something to anchor to. We've got somebody that we can hope in. We've got somebody that we can trust, that we know is in control of everything that's going on. So just keep your eyes focused on Jesus and let him know. Yeah, come on. When the test comes in and the doctor says I've only got a few months left, it's like a bitter pill I'm swallowing. I can hardly take a breath. And when addiction steals my family and there's nothing I can do, my only hope is to trust in you. I trust you, Lord, in the eye of the storm. You remain in control in the middle of the war. You guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. In the eye of the storm. You remain in control in the middle of the war. You guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. One more time. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me. In the eye of the storm. Listen, I don't, I don't know. I, you go ahead. <laughs> Whatever you're going through in your life today, be it, well, some of the stuff we just got through singing about, you can always look to Jesus. As Brother Ronnie is going to be preaching in just a few moments, you can always be assured our blessed hope is there for us. Always. Always. 
I, you know, just, just get your eyes off the stuff that's going on around us in this world today. Stop looking at the world and look to Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the only one we can count on. And let me tell you something, he's got a plan. Give him praise this morning. Say, thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Say, thank you, Lord, that even in the middle of all this mess that's going on around us, I can still praise you today, God. You lift your voices with us. Come on, let's sing this song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye.
Because you are worthy of our praise. Father, we exalt you today and we lift you up. And Father, I, I pray today that you've inhabited the praise of your people. I pray today it's been a sweet smelling incense to you. Bless our words that our preacher, our, our speaker is going to be telling us today. Bless your word. You promise us in, in your, in your uh, holy scriptures, Lord, that when we speak your word, that it never comes back void. So, Father, I know that's going to happen today, Lord. So just touch lives today, Father. Pour out your blessings on us today, Lord. Make us more like you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Well, amen. You guys be seated. Hey, a couple of prayer requests I didn't share earlier. Be praying for our family. Miss Judy uh, has cataracts, and she's going to have to have both eyes worked on. And then Jackson, little Jackson, ever since he's been born, had a, I guess you call a lazy eye. And so we'll be in Birmingham in the morning. Uh, trying to set up surgery for him. So I've got to uh, take care of Judy and Jackson. And so pray for your pastor, amen, that uh, <laughs> everything goes on. And, and even in that, pray for us. Uh, Miss Courtney is still in rehab, and we hadn't seen her for four weeks now. So we're anxious, awaiting to, hadn't talked to her. So we're waiting to hear from her. So pray for our families. I hope you don't think that, you know, we just live in this perfect world. It, it's painful and it's hard, and so a lot of stuff goes on. Hey, turn in your Bibles to Matthew 24. I'm going to read a verse out of Titus 1, or Titus 2, actually, uh, on the theme of the subject. While you're doing that, I just need to confess I lied to you guys two years ago. Two years ago, I lied. Do y'all remember me when we were still in the gym? I said I would never wear skinny britches. Y'all remember that? Well, I went to the store the other day, and these were on sale for about 10 bucks. Now, I don't know if they're skinny britches, but they're pretty close. Amen. So I'm wearing skinny britches. All I know to tell you this, when I put them on the other day, Judy whistled at me. Amen. Now, if I'd have known that two years ago, I'd have bought me a bunch of them. Amen. So uh, anyhow, I think they're skinny britches. I can hardly get them over my ankles. Y'all you know what I'm talking about? But they're 10 bucks. So uh, <laughs> amen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Well, you always eat your words, don't you? Always eat your words. Hey, I, I just want to talk to you a little while on a matter of fact, uh, several weeks on the subject of the blessed hope. With everything going on around us culturally and, and environmentally and politically, man, uh, culturally, uh, every way you can say it, even in the church today, it seems like everywhere you turn, there's just this, this excruciating, painful environment that we live in today. And so what I want to remind you of as the people of God is that we do live in the time of what's called, that's coming, the blessed hope. The, the Lord will soon return. And all the church said, well, there's some things the Bible says that we need to know about that, but the Bible says there's some things we need to be doing about that. It's one thing to know it. It's another thing to be doing something about it. So while you just hold your finger in Matthew 24, let me just read our text, kind of our text thought for the next few months on this subject. Listen carefully. Paul writing uh, this guy named Titus. I won't get into all that. It's a little short book. Uh, right next to the book of Hebrews, it says this, looking for, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't you listen to me. He is coming back. He is coming back. And even though the world says no and all the circumstances seem difficult right now, I just want you to know there's another event on God's prophetic calendar, and that is the soon return Many people call it the imminent return of the Lord Jesus Christ. But in relation to that, now, now let me just say this. It, it looks like for the past 200 years, he could have come back almost at any time. Did you know that? World War I, they thought he was coming back. World War II, he's coming back. Hitler, Mussolini. And then, of course, we had the 1967 Jewish-Israeli seven-day war. And surely Jesus is coming back, right? And, and I mean, really, that's when prophetic tables really, in 19, you had seven to 1967, 1974, Jesus was supposed to come back. And, and so y'all understand all that. So uh, I heard a guy say this one time, every generation has probably had an antichrist ready to step forward and take over. That's a pretty interesting thought. God knows when it's going to be. We don't. 
But there's some things that you and I need to be aware of that is we generationally. Now, I just want to say this. We're going through some things today that's, that's just unusually un, uh, unprecedented in our society. We're, we're on the brink of social anarchy. And you wonder, what is going on? Did you know that has to happen before the Lord comes back? And you can't stop it. Listen to me. I don't, need bug, I don't care how many guns you buy. You're not going to stop God's prophetic truth. And all the church says, I mean, you can put you can put concrete around your house, and you, now you ought to prepare. And and I have one, but at the same time, eventually Matthew twenty four is going to happen, and when it does, you can't stop it. So what do we do? Number one, we know some things, but we can do some things. So the Bible says we're looking for eagerly the second coming or the blessed hope. Well, Matthew twenty four, Jesus does what we call the Olivet discourse. What do you mean? Well, he's on the Mount of Olives. And his disciples come to him and they ask him really three questions in, in Matthew 24. And he then gives uh, an answer to those three questions. Well, let's look at them because you and I probably are talking about them today. If you talk to May Jean Hughes, if y'all know her, Jesus is coming back today at 4 o'clock. We're going up. She keeps, we're going up. 4 o'clock day. Amen. I've talked to her. He's coming today. And uh, I, I just love her heart, her anticipation. So he's sitting on the Mount of Olives. They having a private conversation and look at some questions they ask Jesus. By the way, this is James and Peter and Paul and all the guys, and they're wanting to know what we're wanting to know today. Same question. So look at it. Matthew 24, verse 3. Now, as he sat at the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be? When are these things going to happen? Question one. Number two, what will be the sign of your coming? Question two. Question three, and when is the end of the age? So they're asking, when were these things going to happen? What's the sign of your coming? And when is the end of the age? And so in Matthew 24, he begins to unpack all of these events that's going to take place on planet Earth before the second coming of the Lord Jesus. And so he names some pretty rough stuff. See if it sounds familiar today with you. Would you do that? And by the way, look at what he tells us first. Verse 4. Jesus said, number one, before we get into any discussion about the second coming, the eschatology, the, the study of the doctrine of last things, here's what he said. Let no man deceive you. Here's what he's saying. This is a topic that you can be easily deceived about. If you look at certain things and only certain things, reason I don't preach a lot about the second coming is because that's my hobby horse. My first three years of ministry, that's all I studied was prophecy. Lord's coming back in 1977. Well, 78 and 70. And so I have to stay away from that because it'll absorb you, it'll consume you. And so the first thing Jesus said about all these questions is this. Be careful because if you're not careful, you can be deceived concerning these things. So when you're standing in line at the grocery store and there's a book there that says 22 reasons why Jesus is coming back in 2021, don't buy the book. You already got the book. It's called the Bible, and all the church said. You got the best Bible on it in the whole world. So Jesus said, be careful because you can be easily deceived concerning this. And then he says, for many will come in my name saying I'm Christ and will deceive many. There it is again. Deception, be careful. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. So number one, don't be deceived. Number two, don't be troubled. Do you see that, church? You have the blessed hope. And because you have the blessed hope, all these things are going to take place. Don't lose hope. Man, the world has no hope. We have the blessed hope. And so you and I need to live with the high, holy expectation that Jesus could return at any moment. Don't lose hope in these times. Keep your eye on him. And so the Bible says, don't be deceived. Don't be troubled. I know it's hard. It's difficult, is it not? Sure. But don't be troubled. For all these things must come to pass. Do you see that, church? You can't stop God's sovereign will. And when he decides to unloose the seventh seal and the sixth seal, and whichever seal it is, when that takes place, I'm just telling you, you better hold on. You better watch. You better be ready. And so the Bible says these things are going to happen. Don't be troubled. Don't be deceived. But he said these things must come to pass. What things? Then he says this, but wait a minute, the end's not yet. <laughs> Are y'all excited yet? It's going to get bad, but that's not the worst. It's going to get worse before it gets better. That's what he said, for nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilences 
and earthquakes in a lot of places, different places, various places. Now look what he says, and these are only the beginning of sorrow. Wow. Are, are you listening to me? Sorrow is coming to this planet. A sorrow that you can't pray away, you can't fast away, uh, that you can't medically take it away. There are sorrows coming that only the blessed hope is the cure for. So you better be ready. These are just the beginning of sorrow. Actually, the picture there is of a lady giving birth. She hasn't given birth yet, but she's in the, the beginning stages of having those pains. And she's getting ready to give birth, but she's in the process, but she hasn't yet. And that's what he said. All these things are the, the pain, but it's not yet the sign. Verse 9, they will deliver you up to tribulation. They will kill you, and be hate, you will be hated for my, uh, by all nations for my name's sake. By the way, we're getting there real fast. Christians are considered to be stupid, illiterate, crazy. We are backward. We're uninformed. Wow. Verse 10, and many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Have you ever seen more hatred in all your life? Everybody hates everybody. I mean, it's unreal. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive how many? Many. And here's what he's saying. Be careful during these times because it's easy to catch a guy who sounds good and, and looks good and it's real fancy, but, but be very careful that you're living only in the blessed hope because many guys will tell you a lot of things that you like to hear and want to hear, but it may not be the truth. And because of lawlessness, verse 12, will abound. Lawlessness. We're almost on the brink of social anarchy. Do you understand they're talking about defunding police departments? I don't know about you, but I thank God for the police. Amen. Even when they pull me over and tell me I'm going too fast, they're looking out for my best interest. When they tell me to put the seatbelt on and I... You all right? Your pastor has a streak of rebellion in him. He does. I do. And because lawlessness, anarchy will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Blessed hope. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the nations. Now watch carefully. As a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Now, you can finish reading in verse 15. It talks about the great tribulation. Verse 29, the Son of Man. Verse 32, there's a big one, the parable of the fig tree, when Israel is rebirthed and reborn. But verse 36 through 44 says this, No man knows the hour or the day. How many men know it? No man knows it. No man, no preacher, no prophet, no apostle, no uh, TV evangelist has been given the hour of the day. I don't care what they say. And so we need to be careful. And verse 45 talks about the faithful servant, so forth and so on. Um, this morning, I was, Pastor Eric, I was on your website and just reading about Hands of Hope and International and what, what's going on. Hey, you got a great saying on there this morning. Long-term vision helps us to endure short-term circumstances. That's a good word. Can I say it again? Long-term vision. If you don't have the long look that one day the Lord's coming back and all this social unrest, all this famine, all this sickness, all this hatred, all the killings, all the murders, all the wars, if you only look at that and you don't see the blessed hope, the return of the Lord, then you'll get consumed by what's going to happen between now and then and you'll miss being ready for that moment. So long-term vision. Hey, let, let me make some statements here of some things the Bible says about the coming of the Lord. And if, if I would just write them down. You can turn if you want to. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Well, what does the Bible tell us to do about the coming of the Lord? Well, well let, me give you some, some, uh, th th let me give you some scripture here. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. Listen to this. So that you come short in no gift, we are eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, he says spiritually you ought to be waiting for it. You ought to be waiting for it, waiting for it. It's the blessed hope. It's what we live for. When Sue Martin passed away and we had her funeral service this week, I said this, did you know this is what she's been anticipating for a long time? She's been living for this moment. Now, we're sad. She celebrated. 
Why? Because death to you and I is not disappearance. I'm going to tell you, it's going to be with the Lord. That's blessed hope. Man, that doesn't discourage me. That isn't that we shouldn't, you know, do bad things. But at the same time, you live in such a way, you're waiting for that moment when you get to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, he used the word eagerly awaiting, anticipating it. So we ought to live waiting for it. Titus 2.13, I read it for you. We're to be looking for it. So we're waiting. We're looking. Matthew 24 says we're to be ready for it. These are important thoughts. H how are you living? Are you waiting? Are you looking? Are you ready for that moment? Turn to Revelation 22. This is a good one. Revelation 22, talking about the coming of the Lord. We're going to kind of end the book of Revelation. And, and he said, I'm coming back. I'm going to give you an invitation. But, but look what John says. So in 1 Corinthians, we're waiting. In Titus 2, we're looking. In Matthew 24, we're getting ready. But in Revelation 22, look, look at this, verse 17. It says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him who hears come. And let him who thirsts come, and whoever desires, let him come and take the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone asks these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in it. If anyone takes away, God will take away the, the, the things out of the book of life. But look in verse 20. And he who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming. Would you say that word out loud, church? How? Quickly. The word there in the Greek is suddenly without delay, unexpected, Matthew 24, 42 through 44. He's coming back suddenly. You're not going to have time to get ready. You're not going to have time to get your bride dress on and clean up and all those things. You remember that story in the Bible? So you better be waiting. You better be looking. You better be getting ready. But John said, look in Matthew, uh, look in Revelation 22, 20. He who testifies these things says, Surely I come quickly. And John said, Amen. Even so come, Lord. John prayed for Jesus to return. So we're waiting, we're looking, we're getting ready. And John said, Are you praying in anticipation of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? Or the blessed hope. So as we endure all of these things in the world today, what are some things we need to know? Well, with the few minutes we have left, turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you an outline of what I'm going to be going over the next few weeks, okay? And then um, I'll start filling those in. But, but this morning, all I'm going to give you is an outline. So write these on the preface of your Bible. Do you know it's okay to write in your Bible? God won't kill you. I write in mine all the time. So, so right in there. So blessed hope. What, what do we know about the return of the Lord? Well, there's some things you can know, but there's some things you got to do. Are you waiting? Are you looking? Are you praying for that time? Are you getting ready, prepar preparing for it? So let's read the Bible together. And this is one of the main texts. And I'm going to give you, and I left one of these out, and I'm sorry. I have six topics that I'm going to cover in the next few weeks. And I'm going to give them to you right now. And then next week, I'm going to go back to number one, and we're going to look at what it says. Uh, in the weeks ahead, Dr. David Jeremiah did a good study on this, Adrian Rogers, uh, Johnny Hunt. They're, they're just all Warren Wiersbe. So I'll be throwing a lot of just names and information in there. So what does 1 Thessalonians 4 tell us about the return of the Lord? There's at least five or six things. Let's read it together. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.13, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. The word sleep there is a euphemism for dead. Now, here's the problem. When Paul wrote this book, many of the Christians didn't know what happened to Christians after they die. You put your faith in Christ, you love him, you live for him, and then you die. And, and there's nothing different. No difference between the lost man and the saved man. And Paul said there is. There's a blessed hope. And so he describes literally what happens to those who die in Christ. How many of you here this morning have a loved one who has died and gone to heaven? Raise your hand. Well, what's going to happen to them? Where are they at? What's going on? Now, some of those I can't answer. But I can give you pretty good, I can get you pretty close. Uh, what are they doing right now? Some people say they're in soul sleep. I, we, we can argue about that. I'm just telling you the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And wherever that's at and whatever they're doing, they're pretty happy with it. And all the church said, <laughs> they're not fussing. 
So you, you figure out those things. But the Bible says when you die, you don't get lost. You don't get misplaced. You go to be with the sovereign care of a sovereign God. Now, now my point is not talking about that, uh, explaining that. I just want to tell you what happens about these signs and the sounds of the coming of the Lord. So the first thing he says is this, verse 13. And, and Miss Lisa, I'm going to go ahead and jump into just the outline. Number one, there's the revelation of the Holy Spirit. I want you to see this, church. He says, I want to explain to you what the Holy Spirit revealed to me. So in chapter 4 of the book of Thessalonians, that 13th verse, the first thing we have is the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Paul said, I know some of you are upset. Some of you are concerned about your loved ones who have died in Christ. Brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. Uninformed is the word about those who are asleep. I have my mama in heaven looking forward to seeing her. One day I'm going to get to, and I'll get into that in just a moment, by the way. So the first thing Paul says is this. I want to tell you what the Holy Spirit revealed to me. By the way, all of heaven's truth must be spirit revealed. And the church said, it's not humanly understood. It must be spiritually revealed. So Paul said, this is what the Holy Spirit revealed. Hey, hey, guys, in the first service, it knocked everything out of here. It, it knocked the power off, everything. So two things let me say to you. We got some great emergency lights. Number two, when they built this building, the contractor said, y'all got enough concrete here to float the ark. So he said, you're in the safest building you can be in in Lauderdale County. So if the storm hits, you're going to be all right. And all the church said, I mean, first service, it did. It just was kaboom. And, and man, uh, three people died with a heart attack. And two, no, no, but uh, <laughs> so, so if it goes out, just be still. We'll wait a minute and it'll come back on. So first of all, Paul said, you need to understand. And next week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just that one, number one, and I'm going to tell you what Paul revealed or what he received by the Holy Spirit. Why? He wrote 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and following. Okay? So we'll take just that one. The revelation of the Holy Spirit. Why won't we do it today? Because I don't want to. <laughs> Y'all all right? Hey, we're just getting cranky in our old age. Y'all all right? So number one, revelation of the Spirit. Number two, this is good. Look in verse number 12. If you don't, uh, verse, uh, excuse me, 14. For if we believe, do you believe? Are you looking, living, preparing, praying for the return of the Lord? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. There is the return of the Savior. So there's the revelation of the Spirit that told him what to say. And the first thing he said is the Lord's coming back. The Lord's coming back. We call that the blessed hope. So, so when things get hard and you get fearful, what he says, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him where is he going? He's coming back. God will bring with him those who sleep in Christ. Now, between verse 14 and verse 15, most theologians conservative would say, and I didn't get this in the notes, and I just repent. Or did we get it? The rapture of the saints. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the day God's going to call us home. Amen? Now, a lot of people have a lot of different beliefs about the rapture, when it's going to take place. I'm a pre-trib. I believe we're going to go before the tribulation. Why do you believe that? Because the Bible says God hath not appointed us to wrath. But many of the even Southern Baptists today are jumping for that because so many people are being killed. They said, hey, we're, we're, it looks like to us we're already in the tribulation period. And we could argue about that. But I put the rapture of the saints right here for this reason. Personally, I don't care when it is as long as I get to go. <laughs> I don't care if it's pre, pro, after, before, in, middle, behind, backwards, forward. As long as I get to go, praise God. Now, I believe it's before, and by the way, uh, I, I'm going to dispel a big myth in about week three, and y'all probably going to fire me because uh, I'm going to show you where I found the rapture, Pastor Wendell, uh, even in a verse that we quote wrong, the rapture of God's church before the tribulation period. I mean, it is phenomenal. Shook me this week. I want to give it to you now, but I can't because it'd just be out of place. So what do we have? We have the revelation of the Spirit. We have the return of the Savior. We have the rapture. Now, probably in, in, in eschatology, I would put the rapture before the return. I'm good with that. Okay, so, but I forgot to get these in the notes early, so I had to stick it in here somewhere, so I put it. So there's a revelation, there's a return, but there's a rapture where God takes his people home. And I believe, again, he'll do that before the tribulation period. And I'm going to tell you why. So there's a revelation, there's a return, there's a rapture. Just know that somewhere in God's 
political, not po- prophecy, not political, that God's going to take us home. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that day. So we look forward. Here's a good one. Then uh, look in verse number 15, the resurrection of the saints. So there's a revelation, there's a rapture, there's a return, and now there's a resurrection. What do you mean resurrection? Well, look in your Bible. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain. So when the Lord returns, we believe the church has already been raptured. In verse uh, 14, he brings us back with him because we've been in heaven seven years. And so when after that he come, we come back with him to earth, look, look what happens. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep or those who are dead. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now, I've been picking on us about the shouts to wake up the Baptist the last few weeks. That's all right, as long as I'm awake. I don't want to miss it. Hey, th- this week I got a little funny for y'all. Th- this week, last week your pastor did something real stupid. I had a car broke down over here, and, and I thought I would get up one of those little cargo straps and pull it out of the way. And I did. I pulled it so far in my yard, and then the snap, the strap broke. Ping! And that band of Judy shot out of my yard across the church's yard across Wayne Drive and just boom hit the neighbor's car and almost hit his house well Miss Nan Heiss was sitting up on the hill watching all this and she started hollering I said hey hold on fireworks are coming (laughs) and it did boom Uh, hey I got good news for y'all fireworks are coming amen yeah I'm stupid I know that's all right (laughs) that's why I'm preaching so the Bible says when the Lord comes back with us, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God. Now watch carefully. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. There's a resurrection. That's why some people get the rapture and the resurrection a little confused because they say, well, how can he come back and resurrect people that have, when did they get resurrected? And we'll have to straighten that out later. I can't today, okay? But I do believe that there is a rapture and I do believe there is a resurrection of the people of God. Now, let me say something right here. Have you ever seen those pictures years ago when, when it showed a graveyard and all the graves wide open? Y'all remember those little things, tombstone? You, you're not going to have to open the grave. We're just going to pop out. Amen? Jesus could walk through a door and not even open it. Now, it's okay if he does, but, but he doesn't have to. I, all those graves tore up and dug up, and it's kind of like the Lord's out there with a the shovel digging you up. He's not going to have to do that. God's going to change your body into a mortal body. And at that moment, you're going to become just like Jesus. And I promise you, no dirt's going to keep you. There's an old song. Ain't no grave going to hold my body down. Y'all remember that song? I know I'm running it for you. So the Bible says we're going to be resurrected. So there's a revelation. There's a rapture. There's this thing going. There's a return. And at the return, there's a resurrection. I want you to see this. And you're going to meet some of your family that you've never met before. Think about your great-great-grandmother that you never saw. I had a great-great-grandmother that was a full-blood Cherokee Indian, they say. And I never got to meet her. I don't know that she's a Christian. I certainly hope she was. I um, heard a lot about her, so I, I, I hope I get to meet her in the resurrection. God's going to raise everybody. So listen to me. If you have a loved one in the grave that's been buried, God has their spirit in heaven, their bodies here. He's going to change their body unto, like his body. And then God's going to reconnect the spirit to the body, and that body's coming out of the grave. Resurrection. Wow. Now, the title of this whole thing is The Blessed Hope. One day's going to do it. Hey, when I lived in Louisiana, I heard a cute little story. Down in South Louisiana, there's a city called Homa. If you've never been to Homa, man, it's, it's uh, Homa is almost like another world. It's, uh, so if you pull the plug on Homa, it drains out into the Gulf of Mexico. It is right next to the swamps in Louisiana. Literally, when you drive through Homa, they have shrimp boats in the middle of the city because there's canals that run right through the middle of the city. That's how water is below sea level. But anyhow, there was this preacher preaching on this text that I'm preaching on, an old Cajun preacher. And the boy had been kind of following him, and he knew that he was going to be preaching on this next Sunday about this verse, for the Lord himself to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God. And he just thought it would be cute that if he got up in the balcony and when he read that verse, he would just blow a trumpet and see what happened. 
Can you imagine? So here's this Cajun preaching. He'd be preaching like this. The Lord going to be come back. Going to be a shout. Going to be a trumpet. Going to blast. We're going to all be going. Well, right in the middle of that, that, that kid laying down the balcony, nobody could see him. He blew that trumpet real loud. Everybody left the building. Huh? I mean, they, <laughs> they vacated the premises. Somebody thought Gabriel's done come down, blown the trumpet. Well, this Cajun preacher done got kind of scared because he don't know what's going on. So he's just kind of looking around, white-eyed. Y'all want to talk about, you ever got scared? Yeah, so he just kind of, well, as he was going out to church, the boy thought it would be fun one more time just to lean over the balcony and blow that horn right on the top of his head. Well, he did. The kid got too close to the balcony, fell out, and landed right on top of the Cajun preacher. <laughs> and that Cajun preacher jumped up and said, Get back, Gabriel, I'll cut you. <laughs> so I want to ask you a question. Are you really ready for the Lord? Oh, man, that's good. So there's this resurrection of the saints. Can it get any better? Yes. Look in verse 17. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. There's a reunion after the resurrection. Do you see that, church? A reunion of the saints. Everybody who has been saved, who is in the grave, and those of us who are alive, we're going to be changed if you don't understand that, go to 1 Corinthians 15, 50. In the moment, twinkle of an eye at the last trump, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then when we who are alive remain shall be changed. It literally is the word uh, metamorphosis, uh, like when a moth becomes a whatever, a butterfly, whatever they do to become a butterfly, that, that, that whole transition, something. So the Bible says here there's a resurrection, and after the resurrection, we're going to literally levitate in the air and meet the Lord and those of us who were alive at the time, not in the grave, will be changed. And I'm afraid of heights, but that day I think I'm going to enjoy the ride. How about y'all? Wow. There's going to be a mass evacuation off this planet. I'm even going to tell you what they're, trying, they're going to say about it after that takes place. There's a little theory out there about some UFOs, and we're going to all get, anyhow, just my thought. So the Bible says after the resurrection, after the rapture, after the revelation, there's going to be a reunion that's called, listen to me, the blessed hope. And we will meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Who our time is gone. One other, and I really want you to see this one, number six now. We now have the reassurance of Scripture. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, here it is. Remember, they didn't know what happened when Christians died, so he gave them the revelation told them about the rapture, told them about the return of the Lord, told them about the resurrection, told them about the reunion, and then he said this. Now listen to this. Look, look what he said in verse 18. Therefore, and by the way, when the word is therefore, it's therefore a reason. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So how do we comfort one another? The blessed hope. And he, here's what he said. You guys... Make sure you got the long view and not the short view because it may look bad right now, but it's fixing to get real good on the other side. There's going to be a return. There's going to be a resurrection. There's going to be a reunion. And I want to reassure you this. The Scripture will be fulfilled. Wow. So here's what we're going to do. In the next few weeks, I'm going to take each one of these, and, and I'm just going to kind of unpack them for you, okay, and kind of give you... What about the return? What about the reunion? And we'll get into all of that. Hey, when I was a little boy, about five years old, I had some serious uh, problems with separation anxiety, is what psychologists call it. And uh, because my mom, when I was little, went back to school. My mom had six children. Don't you think about this? She had six children and just a diff difficult family life. And um, so my mom went back to school when I was about four or five years old. And so she went to college because somebody had to make a living, and then she would work in the afternoons. And so I, it wasn't uncommon for me to wake up, mom be gone, and I'd go to bed at night, and she still hadn't come home. So I had some serious anxiety problems, uh, separation. I told you all about, you know, I didn't like going to school, I, blah, blah, blah. And uh, my dad had to give me a banana just to get me on the bus. I, I just didn't cause, just had problems. Still got some problems. But every night I'd lay down. And where my window was, you could see the car lights when they'd go by the house. And every time a car would come by, I would just peek out that window to see if that was Mama coming home. 
Can I just encourage you to do something? Keep on peeking. Because one day, he's a coming. And you better be ready. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Church, listen to me. He's coming. Be prepared. You say, wait a minute, Pastor. He's been gone 2,000 years, and he's closer than it's ever been. He could come today. He could come tomorrow. We need to be ready. I don't know about you. I'm glad of the blessed hope. And all the church said, amen. Father, we bless you and we praise you. Thank you for the high, holy expectation that one day the Lord himself, the Lord himself is coming back. So, God, I pray for those of us who are anxious, who are worried, who are fearful, that, Lord, the world has become so crazy and it has uh, anarchy and upheaval hatredness, murder, famines, diseases. Jesus said all these things must come, but the end is not yet. It's the beginning of many sorrows. So church, let me encourage you today, if you haven't, place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And if you are saved, don't be deceived. Don't listen to the soothsayers. Don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the doubters and the haters of God. And they're out there. You listen to the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another. Can I just put it this way? Keep on looking up. Just like I used to look out that little window as a five-year-old boy, wishing my mom would come home. Listen to me. One day he's coming. Are you ready? Are you ready? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth of Scripture. We pray, God, now you just take these words and literally melt them into our heart. We love you and we thank you. And God, help us to live waiting, looking, and praying for the soon return of the Lord Jesus. We bless you for this great biblical truth that ought to give us the long view and not the short one. And Lord, until that day, may we be found faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the church said, well, amen. Hey, thank you guys for being faithful. Hey, next Sunday, hope to see you back. Um, a, as we have more news about what's going on, we will certainly let you guys know right now. We're just going to kind of stay on track as we are. Uh, I know they're saying the cases are spiking, but the deaths are going down. So we, 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 what's going on? We, we're not sure. So right now, we're just going to stay on track. Hope you'll join us when you can. We love you, and the Lord bless you, and take care of you. And if he comes today, I'll see you in the air. And all the church said, here, there, or in the air, we're going to see the Lord. Amen. Hey, slowly from the back row back, you guys just work your way out of the building. See you next Sunday. Lord bless you.